Hi, I'm Scott Morgan with Flex Your Rights. I made a YouTube video a couple weeks ago called Five Reasons You Should Never Agree to a Police Search, and I promised to come back and answer any questions uh, that people had or any other issues that came up regarding uh, the material there. So, uh, so that's what this is. Um, the first one, unfortunately, probably the number one uh, question that I got was, how high are you in this video? I wasn't high in that video. I'm not high in this one. So let's get over it. There's nothing wrong with, uh, with getting high. <laughs> but uh, I don't want people to think that I'm sitting around smoking spliffs of sour diesel and giving stoned-ass legal advice on the Internet. That's not what this is. So let's move on. On a more relevant note, uh, probably the second big issue that I saw come up in the comments to that piece was a couple different people claimed that refusing a search gives police probable cause to search you. And that's nonsense, and I'd like to explain why, because it's really important to understand this. You can assert your constitutional rights without police being able to use that as, as evidence to justify a search. Uh, this is this is uh, you know a fundamental issue here, and let's think about it for a second, right? The Fourth Amendment guarantees the right of the people to be secure in their persons, papers, houses, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that a police officer needs a warrant to search you, and absent that, uh, the courts have ruled a search can be justified by probable cause, so strong evidence that a crime is being committed and that you're the person responsible for it. Absent that, police can search you if you agree to the search. Essentially, agreeing to the search or giving consent, you're waiving your constitutional right not to be searched. So, if the whole concept here is what's called a consent search that essentially because you've consented to being searched, it's not necessary for police to have evidence of criminal wrongdoing, or it's not necessary to have a warrant signed by a judge. But if, as you know, some people suggested, uh, refusing that consent would give police the, the legal authority to search you, why would we call it a consent search? It's not really optional, is it? If refusing means that they're allowed to search your belongings, that doesn't really add up. Um, I mean, another way to look at this is uh, to think about what a search warrant is. You know, it's a legal document signed by a judge affirming that the investigators or the police officers have sufficient evidence to believe that this person or location, you know, is involved in a crime and that there's criminal evidence contained in there. Why would we have a document that police need to obtain and present in order to justify these searches if merely asking the occupants of a home and being refused entry would then create a legal justification to go in. What is a search warrant even for? If police can automatically search anyone who refuses to be searched, we don't need to have a term called a consent search. We don't need to have a document called a search warrant. Police can just go around and search anybody they want any time. The law doesn't actually allow that. And so I think common sense should tell us that it's not quite that simple. The reality is that the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution does provide protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. And while the courts have restricted that in a number of ways over the years, what we're talking about here is a really basic fundamental issue of, of Fourth Amendment law. And and in reality, the Supreme Court has held over and over and over again that asserting your right against an unreasonable search cannot be used as an evidentiary basis to uh, create probable cause to go ahead and search you. So let's let's you know move on from that. Um, it was uh, funny to me that one of the people making that silly claim here on YouTube actually claimed that they learned in a criminal law class that refusing a search gives police probable cause. So I'd like to know what that, uh, what grade that guy got in criminal law because he seems not to understand some pretty basic issues. Uh, in any case, the point here uh, is, is not that refusing a search is easy or that refusing a search is going to make police walk away. There are a whole variety of tactics that they're going to then deploy at that point and, and a very real possibility that they'll violate your, your rights by going ahead and searching without your consent. 
and I'll come back uh, next time and do another video on some of the issues of what else can happen when, when you refuse consent to a police search. You know, what tactics do they use and what, what tactics can you use to respond? So we'll come back and do that next time. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, we have a whole other variety of YouTube videos here covering many, many topics and, uh, and lots of information at flexyourrights.org dealing with, with police searches, what your rights are, and you know, what uh, tactics and techniques you can use to properly, confidently, and effectively assert your rights during police encounters. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.